I hate him, you know. I really do. It's not very nice, is it? Of your enemies and all that. But suppose your enemy has twisted everything. Suppose he's turned the most wonderful thing in the universe into gibberish. I mean, we're supposed to hate evil, aren't we? Well, suppose your enemy's... Well, it's not evil, obviously. It's just a flipping nutcase. One thing, though. I did not deny Jesus three times. I didn't. Truly, I didn't. Honestly. How would he know, anyway? Was he there? Of course he wasn't. He was back in Tarsus in those days, wasn't he? Making tents and flogging camping equipment and army surplus and stuff. And don't tell me he was this old soul religious practicing Jew. Have you read his stuff? Ever there's a man who knows his way around the mumbo-jumbo mysteries that pass for religion in the brothels of the Roman Empire? It's dear old Saul. Sorry, Paul. We have to call him Paul now, don't we? It'll be Saint Paul next. You think I'm joking? Well, I'm not. I mean, the way Paul talks, he makes it sound like Jesus and God the Father did this amazing cosmic magic trick, doesn't he? Jesus gets crucified, the third morning, God wakes him up again, and hallelujah, we all become, what does Paul call us? Christians, isn't it? Well, it wasn't like that at the time. I remember the last time we had supper together. In this funny little room in Jerusalem, it was about a dozen of us, you know, mates. Blokes. A lot of girls around him in the early days, but we soon sorted that out. Anyway, it was really special. Really nice. We've been through a lot together by this time. But now, this was the Holy City. Some seriously heavy blokes about in the Holy City, I can tell you. And they've got their own police force and spies and informers. And we're sailing right in saying, you're a bunch of hypocrites. You've got the authority and the power and the money and you're using our religion to keep it that way. Well, we're taking it back. We're chucking the old laws in the dustbin of history. The new laws are love God, love other people, and here's the hard one, love yourself. And a street cleaner can do that as well as you. So, not surprising we're a bit nervous, is it? A bit edgy. So, anyway... We're all having this really nice meal. It was the Passover, so it was a bit special. Suddenly, out of the blue, Jesus says, Tonight, one of you is going to shock me. <laughs> well, of course he meant Judas. I know that, you know that now. But then we had no idea. Judas was just one of the lads. He was spot on, real grafter. Never crossed our minds. Of course, me, being Mr. Paranoid, and guess who I thought he was getting at? It's definitely not me, I said. I can tell you that for a fact. And I started glaring at John, and quite frankly, I always thought it was a bit of a wimp. I reckon he'd crack under torture before they'd even heated up the pincers. But Jesus said, this must have been just about the most embarrassing experience in my entire life. He said, Peter, before the cock crows, you will betray me three times. Well, it was wrong, as I've told you, but it did put a bit of a damper on the evening. So, anyway, after a while, he suggested we went for a walk around the park at Gethsemane, see the lights of the city, that sort of thing. And as usual, I grabbed a couple of swords, dropped the lads into shape a bit, off we went. That's me, born organiser. Oh, very well, Paul jaunting off to Corinth and Galatia and every slum in the Roman Empire where there's a few gullible primitives ready to fall hook, line and sinker for his free ticket to the heavenly pleasure park. But who actually did all the work in the Jewish community? The people all this was supposed to be for? Christianity, indeed. Christianity, more like. He talks about the cross like it's a holy wood veneered piece of church furniture. Well, I tell you, it's not. The cross is a particularly nasty piece of torture equipment. If you want to know how it feels to be nailed to one for a day, you can ask me tomorrow night. I'll say one thing for hatred. It does stop you feeling scared. So anyway, we got to get assembly and it's late and it's dark and 
me and a couple of the others are doing the old security business. And look, this is a very good example of what makes me so mad. If we all fell fast asleep, how did we know what the governor was doing? Crying. Praying, praying so hard the sweat was dripping off his head like his scalp was bleeding. Yes, we were all knackered. Yes, we had had a skin full. But either we saw it all and it was real, or we didn't. And it's just a bunch of fibs cobbled together by Paul's public relations boys. Look, I'll tell you what the fib was. The fib was that bit about us dropping off to sleep. I was awake. And what I saw was this beautiful, wonderful man, lonely maybe, scared, yes, wrestling with all this stuff. Anyway, the next thing I knew, there's shouting and torches and I hold my eyes and it can be the enemy because Judas is with them, but it is the enemy. And they've got clubs and, and handcuffs and allies are flinging themselves behind logs and diving into bushes and one of them's got his robe caught on something, a, a branch or something, and he's struggling to get away and wow, it rips right up the middle and the next moment he's racing hell for leather down the hillside, Stark's daring naked. But I didn't run. I did not run. Betray him three times, no way. I'd got my sword right and I started laying into this little Weasley fella. And then I heard Jesus' voice. I looked round and he had that look in his eyes that, that just completely opened you up from top to bottom. And you know, I think that was the first time I ever really realised that there wasn't going to be a revolution. Part of me had known for ages, of course. The lid nearly blew off in Galilee and Jesus had just sort of, sort of walked away from it, but... Whenever he talked about this wonderful new kingdom, part of me thought, yes, we'll smash imperialism. We'll smash inequality. We are the revolutionary vanguard. I reckon that's why Judas grasped him, actually. He reckoned it was the same old story. The revolution betrayed by the revolutionary leader. I mean, Judas wasn't a bad bloke. I rather liked him, actually. I still feel... See, Paul never understood any of this stuff. But yes, of course, we all want to go to heaven. I mean, you'd be a mug not to, wouldn't you? But there's got to be a kingdom here, too, that's about freedom and honesty and people caring for each other. I mean, really, caring for each other. Not just saying you do and then kicking the old and the lunatics out on the street. We actually managed to get Paul to come to Jerusalem a couple of years ago. Big secret negotiations. Us lot, the survivors on one side. Me, Jesus, his brother James, John. Funny about John, isn't it? I thought he was such a wimp and it turned out he was probably the best of the lot of us. Anyway, on the other side there was Paul and a, about 20 of his clones, all identical, all looking like corporate Roman executives with blistered eyes. And we talked to him about Jesus, about what he'd really been like. A wedding at Cana, knocking over the money changers' temples, you know, real stuff. And how he'd never said a single word in his entire life about a new religion. And quite honestly, organised religion was the one thing that got right up his nose. And you know, I don't think Paul heard a single word we said. When we finished, he stood up, shook our hands, and he said, Oh, I'm glad you see things my way. It's great to know we're all on the same side. We were just a bunch of provincial hicks, and he was a man with a mission. God save us from men with a mission, eh? I managed to get away from Gethsemane, and I followed Jesus and the soldiers back into town to to the high priest's house and I'm sitting there in the courtyard and hood over my head shivering warming my hands by the brazier and this stupid little girl she was a servant or something she comes up to me and she says you're one of Jesus's lot aren't you and I said I'm flipping not 
I mean, obviously I didn't mean I didn't know. I mean, how did I know whether I was one of his lot or not, if he wasn't the Messiah, if he wasn't the great revolutionary leader, if he wasn't going to turn the world upside down, then who was he? So then she starts up again. I recognise your accent. You're from up north in Galilee. You do know him, don't you? No, I said. I don't. I didn't, did I? So then they all start. Everyone in the courtyard's winding me up now. You do know him. You do, you do, you do, you do. No, I don't. You know, in the cock crew. And I swear on my life, I just wouldn't have that song. So anyway, once Paul's little scribblers had got their hands on that story, they were over the moon, weren't they? Stupid old Peter, eh? Impetuous, ignorant, cowardly old Peter. <laughs> oh, he's lovable, of course, and we've got to respect him, haven't we? Because everyone knows Jesus said Peter was the rock on which his ministry was going to be built. Although, quite frankly, if I'm as much of a pillock as I'm painted, Jesus must have been a pretty lousy judge of rocks. But as for theology, like what Jesus actually meant, Peter's totally clueless. You rely on Paul. Paul's the man for that kind of thing. He'll be dead soon, of course. Forget us all in the end. Paul, Luke, James. Me first in about 45 minutes. But they'll track the others down. The Romans are very efficient at that sort of thing. You have to give them credit. But after we've gone, it'll be the scribblings that'll be left behind, won't it? Paul's adventures, Paul's letters to young churches, Paul's little letters to all his little chums. And of course, the amusing anecdotes about impetuous Peter and nasty Judas and doubting Thomas and the rest. But do me a favour. If you come across any of that stuff, don't let anyone else tell you what's in it. Read it for yourself. Very carefully. And read between the lines too. And maybe, just maybe, you'll actually hear the governor's voice. And I tell you, it is the sweetest, most exciting, most challenging here and now sound in the entire universe. Hmm. And I'll give you a little tip. If you want to be the one who actually runs the show, make sure it's you who writes the minutes, okay? <laughs>